Welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 44 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the required field validator control in ASP.NET. In general, validation controls are used to ensure if the data entered by the user is valid. Microsoft ASP.NET Framework provides six built-in validation controls. These validation controls can be found in the Visual Studio Toolbox under Validation tab. You can see the validation controls here. Compare, custom, range, regular expression, required field and validation summary controls. In general, these validation controls can be used to perform both the client-side and server-side validation. Now, browsers understand only client scripts and HTML. In the past, to perform the client-side validation, developers themselves had to write the custom JavaScript. With validation controls in place, we don't have to do that anymore. All we have to do is drag and drop these validation controls on the web form, configure some of the required properties, and that's it. When the page renders, these validation controls are going to emit the required JavaScript, which is going to perform the client-side validation for us. But then keep in mind, these client-side scripts can spread viruses and cause security concerns because of which users may disable JavaScript on their browsers. And if that happens, client-side validation is kept. That's why it's always a good practice to perform the server-side validation irrespective of whether client-side validation is done or not. In this example, in a bit, we'll discuss about how to do both the client-side and server-side validation using these validation controls. As part of this example, we need to design a form where the user can enter his name and select his gender, and then a button to submit the form to the server for processing. So first, let's go ahead and design this web form. Just to save some time in typing, I have this HTML already uh, typed in. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here, I have a simple ASP.NET Web Application project. Let's go ahead and paste that copied HTML here. OK, so if you look at the design, it's exactly what we have seen on the screen. There is a text here, name, and then a text box for the user to enter their name, and then uh, text gender, a drop-down list which shows uh, the genders. So here, if you look at the drop-down list, we have three items within the drop-down list. The first item is like a prompt for the user, select gender, and the value for that is minus one. And the next item is male, value is male, and the final item is female, and the value is female. And then finally, we have this button control whose ID is set to button save and text is set to save. The width of the button is obviously 100 pixels there. And then finally, we have a label control uh, which is used to display the status if the data is properly saved to the database or if there are any validation errors. Okay, so that's a simple uh, web form design there. So obviously, when I double click this button, the event handler for the button click uh, gets generated. And that's when we want to save the data to the database. But before that, we want to perform the validation on the client side. Okay, And to do the validation on the client side, we can make use of the validation controls that ASP.NET Framework provides for us. Now, what we basically want to do is I want to ensure both these fields are, are entered by the user before they try to submit this form. OK, so to do that, we have a validator control, required field validator control. As the name suggests, this validator control ensures that the user has entered some data into the controls before he submits the form for processing. So let's see how to use that validator control. So let me flip to the source mode here. And then the first thing I want to validate is the name of the user. So to capture the name of the user, I have this text box, txt name. So let me drag and drop a validation control onto the web form, the required field validator control. And if you look at this validator control, just like any other standard ASP.NET control, it has got the ID and run it is equal to server attributes. Let give, let's give this ID a, uh, a meaningful name, required field validator name, because this is going to validate the name text box. And then obviously, error message is the message that we want to display when the control fails the validation. The message that I want to display here is name is required. All right. And the next property that we want to configure that's most important is the control to validate property. This is the property which is going to tell the validation control, all right, this validation control, you have to validate this control or some other control. 
Now we want to tell that to the validator control. How do we do that using control to validate property? Here we have we specify the ID of the control that we want to validate. In this case, the text box. Text box ID is txt name. So I'm going to take that ID and specify that as the value for the control to validate property of the required field validator control. That's it. So now save this and if we run the project and if we try to submit the page without entering a name then it's going to prompt the user to actually enter the name. So I click save so name is required. I get that and the web form is not submitted to the server for processing. All this validation at the moment is happening on the client side and if you look at that message that's in black color so obviously if you want to change that you can specify the four color just like any other control. So four color, let's say I want that to be red and I do that there. Okay, that's good. Now we have another control that I want to validate. That's drop down list in this case. So let me drag and drop another control or let's copy and paste this. So I want another required field validator control to validate the selection within the drop down list. So I have pasted that here and this is going to validate the gender. So I'm going to call this required field gender and then the error message gender is required and four color is going to be red and the control to validate and this is what is very important so this validator control should validate the drop down list and the id of the drop down list is ddl gender so pick up that id and specify that as the value for control to validate property that's it now let's go ahead and run this and try to you know submit the form without selecting the name and gender and see if we get the validation error messages okay i haven't entered the name and selected the gender uh, click save look at that name is required but where is the error message for gender it's not coming and that's because we have the select gender item already selected in the drop down list so the required field validator is thinking that okay there is a selection within the drop down list which means the user has supplied a value but we know that that is the initial value in the drop down list and not a value that the user has selected okay so if that's the case we need to specify that to the required field validator and how do we do that the required field validator has got a property called initial value and you need to specify what is the initial value so do you specify select gender or minus one we need to specify minus one because that's the drop down list selected value item when the when select gender is selected the value is minus one so we have to specify the value which is minus one here so now if i run and if i try to submit the form without selecting the gender you know we get the error message as expected save so name is required gender is required as expected now the validation is happening on the client side without even submitting the form to the server for processing okay and all this is done by the JavaScript that is emitted by these validation controls okay now in general these validation controls you know for example the control to validate is common to all validation controls similarly error message is common to all validation controls as far as required field validator control is concerned the only property that is specific to this control is the initial value property okay um, now there are other properties which are common to every other validation control for example there is a property called uh, text okay if I specify text as for example star here look at what's gonna happen if I flip the form to design mode now look at this instead of the error message it's using the text so when I run this form and try to submit without providing a value for the gender you know the text property is used so the star is displayed here and not the error message now there are reasons why we use this error message and text properties when when we talk about validation summary control we'll understand that but for now understand that when we specify both the text and error message properties then text property will be shown by the validation control by default okay and there is another property called display uh, again we'll talk about that just in a bit in a in a later session uh, so don't worry about that property for the time being okay now when I run this and then try to submit the form without providing the values for the required fields obviously I get validation errors okay but then remember users can disable client-side validation by disabling JavaScript so if it's Internet Explorer I can go to tools internet options and go to the security tab and then on local intranet go to click on custom level 
scroll all the way down and somewhere at the bottom you should see something called scripting and by default that's enabled click on the disable radio button click OK you'll get security warning click yes and click OK now the JavaScript is disabled on the browser okay now before we do any processing let's change the code here so when I click save button we want to save the data to the database now I'm not going to save the data to the database but then we are going to just you know when we we know that when the user clicks this button and if the form is posted back to the server we are going to save the data to the database so we have this label label status on the web form this particular label I want to display a message there label status dot text is equal to data saved successfully okay that's fine so now if we run this remember we have disabled JavaScript on the client browser window okay so I haven't selected anything here I click Save button look at that it is showing that message data saved successfully and I still get my validation error even upon post back you know on on the server side you know the server has detected these two fields are required and and they are not populated so I get the error messages back but then the code in the button click is also executed meaning if we had adio.net code here to save the data to the database it would have saved an empty field into the name column and you know select gender into the gender column which would have been I mean we didn't expect that to happen okay so how do we validate uh, the page on the server side you know I want to check okay did every validation control pass validation if that's the case only then save the data to the database otherwise display a message you know just like how it is showing here display this message here but don't save the data so how do we determine that on the server side all you have to do is use one property there is a property called if page dot is a valid property so this is a boolean property which is going to return a true or false this property will return true if all the validation controls has passed you know validation otherwise this property is going to return false so if page dot is valid we know that all the validation controls has passed validation which means the user has provided the required data and then it is safe to save data in which case you write the adio.net code here to save data to the database otherwise if the page is not valid that means at least one of the validation controls has failed validation in which case we want you know display a message to the user stating that data is not saved so label status dot text we can say you know validation failed data not saved okay and then probably if you want to give um, you know some color so label status dot four color is equal to system dot drawing dot color dot red okay on the other hand you know if it successfully saves maybe I want green color or whatever okay so now let's put a breakpoint here let's run this one and see what is this property going to return when we actually submit the page without entering at least one of the required fields so let the form load okay so we have the form loaded let me click the save button so we hit that breakpoint there and look at this page dot is valid that returns false and then if it returns false it's gonna to come to the else block and I press F5 and as you expect validation failed data not saved now client-side validation is not done now because the client has disabled the JavaScript so the JavaScript will not run on the client browser and the web page will be submitted to the server for processing and in that case on the server we are still checking okay is the page valid if yes then submit the data otherwise display this error message okay now on the other hand let's supply everything for example name let's say Prajim and let's say gender as male and now I click save button look at that page dot is valid true okay I press F5 and data saved successfully so keep in mind if all even if one validation control fails validation look at that 
this property is going to return false. If all the validation controls on the page passes validation, only then this page.isValid property is going to return true, in which case we want to save the data. Otherwise, we want to display a message to the user. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.